deep in our core how less than we all are. Oh, that's you. your issue. And it's your hubris. Join the crowd. Join the line. Your... <laughs> this is not a healthy conversation. If you're not careful, you're going to die a lonely old queen. <laughs> what she call him a queen? Oh, dear. Hi, movie lovers. Welcome to Old Lady Reacts. I'm the old lady, otherwise known as Michelle. I'm a huge movie buff, and this is my channel where I react to mostly action and superhero movies that I've never seen before, but also other stuff that looks interesting or new. I started the channel so I could understand the inside jokes and references in WandaVision, and here we are, almost two years later, still reacting. I'm not sure what to expect from Maestro. I'm very confused about the way that it's been like distributed, released, or whatever you want to call it. Like, it was only in select theaters for two weeks, and now all of a sudden it's out on Netflix. So I'm not sure what that means. Like, did they understand like that it's not? It's it's just going to have a very limited audience of people who are going to be interested in in, in it. It's kind of artsy. Like, did they just want to get it into people's hands over the holidays while people are sitting at home, or do they just? Not, do they not believe in it? Like, I, don't, I wouldn't want that. I don't think that. I can't imagine that. So, yeah, I feel like it's something that I should be seeing in a theater with a really good sound system. So I'm hoping my headphones, my cheapy little headphones can handle it. I don't know. I'm just not sure what to think about that other than that I'm glad that I can watch it right away with you guys. Uh, unlike Barbie and Oppenheimer, both of which, you know, I watched in the theater and now I'm like, I'm not sure, like, should I watch Barbie for the channel, even though I've already seen it? But, you know, whatever. That's normally just how movies work. And in this case, it's different. So I'll try not to read anything into it until I actually see the movie. So I know a little bit about Leonard Bernstein, but Stein, Steen, I don't know which. I'm not at all familiar with his orchestra, orchestral works, but I know the musical theater stuff pretty well. But West Side Story, of course, I know very, very well. Um, but also Candide. I've listened to it um, and I know the music. I've seen the show and it's wonderful. Um, I think of, I have a friend who thinks that the overture for Candide is like one of the most beautiful pieces of music ever written. So, yeah. And overall, I really like Bradley Cooper's work in comedies like The Hangover, which I think is one of the funniest comedies out there, but also like more serious stuff like Silver Lending's Playbook. And I loved A Star is Born. I thought it should have won the Oscar that year. It was, it made me really mad that it didn't get the positive attention that it deserved. I think it was an amazing film. It was fantastic and sad and lovely. And uh, yeah, so I'm excited to see what he does with Maestro. I, I know it's another labor of love for him and he makes some interesting stuff. So yeah, I'm excited. So before we get started, please subscribe so you can see all of my reactions Then check out my Patreon if you're interested in participating in polls, having access to loads of exclusive content and watching full length reactions. Hop over there and become a patron to support the channel. It really does help. All right, let's dive into Maestro. The work of art does not answer questions. It provokes them. And its essential meaning is in the tension between the contradictory answers. That's very Candide of him, too. Like, that's literally what Candide is all about. Like, there's no answers. There's no... Is there true happiness to be found, or should we just find it in what we can find? And yeah. Is he happy with that? I can't tell. I don't think he is happy with that. Does he not like it? It's always better on the piano. I don't know why. Everything's better on the piano. <laughs> Julia Vega swears that she's on the top of the stairs every morning when she comes down to do the laundry, making sure she's separating the whites and the darks. <laughs> <laughs> Who is he talking about? Is he talking about his wife? I miss her terribly. Oh, has she passed away? Okay. Of course. Yes, I'm aware. That's a very cool shot. He's lighting a cigarette. I just read he died of mesothelioma. <laughs> so yeah, I think we're going to see a lot of smoking in this movie, I have a feeling. You got him, boy! <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. <laughs> cool place. <laughs> I 
Bamford starts with a downbeat rest, and you didn't give me a rehearsal with the orchestra. I told you you were going home. Did Robert Appleby again invite you to Carnegie Hall? I'm sorry. He's going on a Carnegie Hall with no rehearsal? Oh, Lord. Conduct here for the first time after many with no years rehearsal. <laughs> without rehearsal. <laughs> but he loves the... <laughs> Proud. Carnegie Hall is so proud of you, and New York is proud of you. Leonard Bernstein. Is that how it really happened, I wonder? I'm going to record it and send it to you. Oh, this is the new ballet he's composing for you, the one about uh, three sailors on leave in New York getting up to no good. <laughs> on the town. Sorry, gentlemen. No, no, he likes leaving the door open. Oh, oh, for Oh, hey, Isaac, how are you? You know David, and uh, that's Jerry Robbins. Hello. Hi, Isaac. Oh, that's Jerry Robbins. Okay. Makes sense. Well, I understand. Rudzinski's coming in at 11.30 to rehearse. Yes, okay, well, I'll be down in a second. Oh, Rudzinski, okay. okay. <laughs> Don't forget your show pony here is a composer. It's like the who's who of, of musical theater and dance back then. I think it's, it's just too much for one man. Is it because it was on the liver spot? No, no, it's, no, it's too much for one man to take. <laughs> Honestly, David. <laughs> okay. And pardon all the mistakes, uh, but it was all Aaron Copeland's fault. It was all my fault. <laughs> and, then and that's Aaron Copeland back then? <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> Put in a word for me with Rudzinski, will you? Well, I will. I'm not his favorite, but I will. Love you, baby. Love you. Did he say Rudzinski or Nudzinski? I was assuming that uh, I thought it was, he was saying Nudzinski, the ballet dancer. <laughs> Great shot of her. I feel like I'm watching this in low res. Like, why is it? We'll just see if it pops in or something. Must protect her. The villain don't respect that her. Time. I leap to her defense and knock a hole right through the screen. No, 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 no. Oh, I think I know who that is. Eddie, Eddie Cantor. Although I think he'd be older than that now. I think he was in the 20s. And this is in the 40s. The soprano out of his poor baby sister performing all those operas when we were children. Let that be fair warning to you and to everyone. <laughs> Love her. I might be here. You've certainly been making the rounds. Have you met the guy? Cigarettes. Cigarettes everywhere. Just the piano player. <laughs> well, I figured you needed no introduction. Hello. I'm Lenny. <laughs> Hello. And that is a career which demands the versatility to play a panoply of characters. And that is my conclusion. <laughs> that you, my dear, are very similar to me. What? Desperate for me to join the family business so I can make a living. What was the family business? Sam J. Bernstein Hair Company. <laughs> hair Company? Composite which enables me to be many things at once. Interesting. And many things at once. Sure, and survive, because the world wants us to be only one thing, and I find that deplorable. Well, that's true enough. Be very attractive, Felicia. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <Jeez. laughs> <laughs> gotta love those drunk friends at the party. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Just on the stage. Uh, take her shoes off. Oh, okay. Take your shoes off? What are they doing? What, do I have to do something? Well, uh, maybe. Now I'm nervous. <laughs> that was very fancy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to read it. We're uh -huh. actually going to do it. Yes. And I'm the king. You're the king, and okay. this is your castle. Oh, wonderful. So now I want to hear, like, I want to hear recordings of him back then. Like, did he really talk with that? Like, it's a very, um, very uh, Catherine Hepburn ish in the movies back then. I didn't see you yesterday, but I looked at your horse. It's so beautiful. Blow smoke right in her face. <laughs> Not sexy. Thank you, Joseph. Good night, marvelous. Thank you, Joseph. <laughs> Does Joseph even know who that is? I rarely stay out past nine. Well, hold on a sec. You made an exception for me. I thought maybe you were worth making an exception for. Oh. <laughs> Good line. Something's wrong. What? What's your character's name? Um, they do seem a little bit like they're acting in a play, in, even when they're not acting the play. <laughs> it's a little freaky how much he enjoys the audience cheering for him. It's a little scary, like the expression on his face. For this marriage, and well, I think he's your type. What type is that? Same as mine. Unavailable. Yeah, what's my type? <laughs> available. I just take anyone who's available. I don't think so. If you had any sense, they'd tell Miss Jones to stay in bed. You really 
Oh, wonderful. Oh, dear. Thank you. It's so kind of you to come. <laughs> and his date's like, please come back. I'm just very, Blow the whole place terribly, up. terribly relaxed. Aren't you? Yes, I am. Are you? Yes. I was going to say, is it a good thing that he's relaxed? Does he like to be relaxed like that? Oh, she's so beautiful. Uh, Tell me about it. Oh, she's wonderful. She's a lovely girl. She is really beautiful, I will say. <laughs> He's a terrible actor. Terrible. No. They sent me all the way to Hollywood, and then they put me in camera, and, and then they, they said, thank you. Straight Here's home. a one-way ticket back to New York City. <laughs> yeah, thank you is what they say when you have a bad audition. <laughs> you just say, they just say, thank you, and then you go. The Rochester Philharmonic. Oh, they passed me over. <laughs> yes, I know. Well, they thought I was spending... Yeah, so what's your, what's your point? He can truthfully say to himself, my life and my work are clean. Well, yeah, but then who wants that? Like, who, who defines clean? Leonard S. Burns. Oh, jeez. Really? We're going there? God. <laughs> we can't just leave. Oh, yes, we can. <laughs> That was a cool cut. I like that. So they just decided to just like <laughs> get up from the dinner table. <laughs> yes. Go sit at, at the table on stage. Yes, please. I'll do that. Why would you ever want to give this up? It's so wonderful. Oh, it's not serious music, is it? Well, what does that mean? Oh, I hate when people think that about musical theater. I love musical theater so much. Like, oh. He thinks I could be the first great American conductor. Is that what you want? I was going to say, yeah. Does he care about being the first great American conductor? I want a lot of things. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, he wants a lot of things. <laughs> really? We're going to say I'm trying to... Ballet dance. You know, it's funny. He's he's doing something very similar to what he did in A Star Is Born, where he's only filming from from the perspective of the stage itself. He almost in in A Star Is Born, he never did it once. He's, he did it once in here in this movie in one of the previous scenes but he in this one he's not shooting from the audience perspective in the theaters at all it's always from the perspective of the artist on stage which i think is really fascinating no we both tell each other a secret and then we both tell each other something that we're envy oh, slow res again it's just driving me nuts i used to have dreams where i would kill my father okay then because he was so cruel Not sure what to say to that. Felicia Burns has absolutely no last <laughs> It really doesn't. It sounds wrong. Mm -hmm. well, so, so has he actually proposed? I actually envy the air that gets to funnel its way through you. But it would <laughs> be some tonal pitch variations no. if it came out the other end, wouldn't it? <laughs> what are we talking about here? I tell you about the, the girl. I wrote letters about Felicia. What I wrote about. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. The girl. Yes. Lovely. Well, we're gonna have lunch with Coos, otherwise we'd we'd uh, meet up with you now. But what about later? Have a drink or something. I would love that. Yeah. yeah. Awkward. So we'll see you later on. Yes. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Come on, come on, little... Yeah, she's not sure what to make of that either. Likes without guilt or confession. Please, what's the harm? I know exactly who you are. So does she really know, like, what's going on? I don't know. I don't know if she fully understands, but she probably does. I don't know. She seems rather worldly, so... No! no not here, no. No, not here. No, it's not how I meant it to be. They're very cute together, though. From the time he substituted for Bruno Walther to conduct the Philharmonic Symphony at the age of 25. That was 25. Oh, my gosh. Among them, he's writing two musical shows. 
Uh, one of them is an adaptation of Romeo and Juliet. That's West Side Story. With, uh, yeah, sometimes, sometimes I forget that West Side Story is an adaptation of Romeo and Juliet. Like, it's just like, it's just its own thing. And, um... Just my... You know my schedule better than I do. <laughs> well, I want to know what color that dress is that she has on. A personality difference which occurs between any composer versus uh, any, or any creator versus any performer. I guess I never thought of conductors as performers so much. But I get, I, 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 they, it's true. Makes sense. I suppose that means you become a schizophrenic and that's the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> so I am kind of getting the point of this, uh, that he's two sides of him in loving Felicia and loving these loving men and, and loving conducting and loving composing. And... Hmm. More cigarettes. Hello, children of Zeus! And he's married too now, okay. Can I tell you a secret? Do you know I slept with both your parents? <laughs> <laughs> too much, isn't it? Too much. Yeah, no, don't tell you, yeah. It in. yeah. I'm reading it in! <laughs> yeah, that was a lot. Awkward. What's he so upset about? Seeing him with his family. And it was going to give him pleasure or stop him from suffering, and it's in my power to do it. And what the hell, you know? <laughs> but one has to do it completely <laughs> without. What specifically are we talking about here? Is there a single shot of this entire movie that doesn't, he doesn't have a, sing, a cigarette in his hand? <laughs> that is very cool with the shadow. It's a cool shot, but it's in low res, so I can't really tell if it's <laughs> a cool shot. It's probably gorgeous, but I can't see it. See, I want to know what color that dress is too. <laughs> I'm sure it's not white. Like I kind of, I, I'm, I'm, I'm digging the black and white. Like I know what he's trying to do with it, but I'm kind of wishing that it wasn't black and white. Oh, there we go. Okay, now it's not black and white. Oh my god! No, I didn't even remember. Has Daddy mentioned anything to you about Harry and Amberson this summer? No. Oh. Oh, we've jumped way forward at the grown kids. Okay. What does Daddy say? Daddy thinks it's a great idea. Well, then I think it's a great idea. So I have your blessing? Yes, you do. Okay, thank you. I love bye. you. Okay, bye. So what does, da what does daddy say? And then she's like, okay, if daddy agrees, then I agree. Good, so happy. You're intimidating me, but I will try my yeah, best. That's, 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 trouble, though, that's a weird shot. Behind, it's, a lot of things are like behind pillars, through curtains and windows and things. Well, taking it like a champ. You are. I would never know. Handling it quite well. Like, who is that behind the curtain? Like, who is talking behind the curtain? Like, <laughs> like, I just want to be like, why are we behind a curtain? Hey, movie lovers, just want to take a very brief intermission to tell you that there are full-length versions of a bunch of my reactions over on Patreon, as well as exclusive reactions that haven't been published on YouTube, and polls. If you'd like to choose what I react to or watch the entire movie along with me, hop over there and check it out. Okay, let's get back to the movie. That was the crossword uh, last week. Three letters. Two letters. Two letters. Pun. Yes, it is pun. Yes, it is. Did you do it Thursday? Okay, what? Uh, where do you live? Where do, who, who are you? I'm from San Francisco. Yeah. Uh, no, so you're from Earth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're not an agent. Yeah. <laughs> where, where do you live? Who are you? Like, they weren't even introduced. Like, what is this guy's name? How are we going to stop your problem? I don't know what to do. Well, I'm worried about it. We have to figure it out. So well, don't they? Did they take a... Did they, did, do you He's such a flirt, too. <laughs> He's kind of so open about it. I'm so sorry. Fix your hair. You're getting sloppy. Yeah, like that's pretty blatant at a at a party with like, when anybody could just walk in on them. Like if he was doing it with other women, it would be bad too. Like you know, <laughs> it's just a little not okay. She's right. She's he's getting getting sloppy. The young people's concerts and omnibus reaching hundreds of millions all over the world. Oh, I do remember hearing about the young people's concerts. That was a big thing. But well, actually, this is when you add it up, there's not much that I've created. Not much. <laughs> I don't know, Candy, it's pretty cool. <laughs> to understand what you think about in your private moments, your 
personal feelings on well, on life as you know it. Yeah, I don't know if people are going to want to read that. <laughs> not, not in this era, maybe. This has marked many artists, and you can see it in their work. This seems to be a it seems to seep into the subconscious, so that there's this great depression. Well, that is yeah, that is kind of common, especially when you get to like his age. What is he? Fifty, mid fifties at this point. You know, you look back on your career and you'd be like, well, what have I accomplished? I had no idea because, you know, I had this feeling of her at first, you know, incredibly, w w which she is, vivacious. Well, now she's the happy little housewife looking the other way. I mean, she's probably not that happy. And the other is that I do. I love people so much that it, it's hard for me to be alone. So I love people so much it's hard for me to be alone is, is a very nice way of saying what's happening inside of his head. Take for bar 24, just the end to make a garden, make a garden grow. Heading to the oh, yay, we get some candy. I want to hear it. Just... Looking through Voltaire's work, and I couldn't find that place robbed the Gubernia. That's because I made it up, my dear boy. <laughs> Who is that actor? I can try to remember. Okay. Now we're seeing West Side Story. It's weird that guy, we didn't really see the creation of this music. Now we're seeing it years later being used. Like. And I wanted to have a drink. Are we, are we building up to a fight? Because this is like the rumble music. It's weird. She's terribly upset, darling. Well, what is she upset about? Uh, she's been hearing gossip. Oh, dear. Well, I think she's old enough, don't you think? Well, I don't care how old she is. I ask that you be discreet. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of important. Don't you dare tell her the truth. Oh. Again, though, that was that sh that that shot was like shot through a doorway. See how he does the autographs tonight. He's a sweet boy. Yeah, you know, your mother uh, told me that you um, were very upset because you had some rumors. It's amazing the difference in the voice from the beginning. It, his voice was like kind of high, and now it's like super low and gravelly because of the cigarettes. Student at Curtis, there was a boy. See, like a very nice boy. Brought a pistol to school, tried to kill me because he was jealous. Okay, then. Arthur Rajinsky was the musical director of the New York Philharmonic. <coughs> God. So it is Rajinsky. Okay. Tried to strangle <laughs> me during a rehearsal. <laughs> and it's plagued me all my life, and I apologize for plaguing you now. But I hope that helps. Probably not, because it's kind of a BS <laughs> excuse, but okay. I'm relieved. Is she going to, like, see it firsthand and then now and see, know that it's basically a lie? He wants to tell her, though. He, he doesn't want to have to lie about this stuff. I thought he was going to in that minute there. Jamie loves being with him. And, Jamie? But I thought you'd like him, too, don't you? Yes, I do. Yeah, but that's not why he's there. And, and, well, I, no, I'm not doing that. No, not I, have, I, have an, I have an interest in, in spending time. Again, this shot, like, through... But I could easily tell about to come. I'm, no, I, no, I, I misread, no, I misread, no, no, I misread no, the no. room. Clearly, <laughs> I misread the room. Well, it's not really about that. It's, about it's, it's so fascinating because he's lying and she's trying so hard to make it okay that he's lying. Like, it's such a weird, it's a weird dynamic. Well, then it's fine. Yes? Yes. All right, darling. Like she needs to be, she feels the need to be so accommodating. I, mean, I thought we were having a conversation. But we were having No, 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 no. No, I'm Fine. sorry. I, I thought we were having a conversation. Both of them are so messed up. I don't know what this is from. I'm sure this shot is lovely if I could see it like in the proper resolution. I have finished class. <laughs> no. Where's mommy going? Oh, it does say, did she run out the, she climbed out the window? Where is she? 
he's not conducting this, so why is he not conducting his own piece? She looks so angry. Yeah, that's not awkward at all. He reminds me of Adam Driver, but I know that's not Adam Driver. I've, I think I've seen that actor before. I was trying to figure out who he was. Yeah, that would probably piss me off, too. <laughs> Is she over it? He's just kind of over it. And of course, he's going to, you know, he's one of those, but you said it was okay. You said you understood kind of guys. How could I have known that you'd be upset about me holding my lover's hand in, <laughs> in public while you were sitting next to me on the other side, like kind of thing, like... Yeah. <laughs> it was quite so a what? stunt that you pulled. What? That was quite a stunt that you pulled. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, here we go. I understand you're angry with me. Jesus Christ. But okay. <laughs> was that supposed to happen? <laughs> he just went with it. I love it. Yeah, there is a saying in Chile about never standing under a bird that's full of shit. <laughs> yeah. And I've just been living under that fucking bird. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. It's actually become comedic. Yeah. To what you've been given, to the oh, gift please. you've been given. Please. My God. The gift comes with burdens. Oh, if you had any the idea. burden of... Well, don't they all? You aren't up on that podium allowing us all to experience the music the way it was intended. You are throwing it in our faces. Hmm. Deep in our core, how less than we all well, are. That's you. your issue. That <laughs> and it's your hubris. Join the crowd. Join the line. <laughs> this is not a healthy conversation. <laughs> four years where you, you couldn't decide if you wanted to marry me. me. That's what I think. The idea. Oh, they did it for four years. Oh, yikes. Well, she should have known at that point. Waiting outside the fucking hospital for you like an idiot in my truth. Your truth is a fucking lie. <laughs> Your truth makes you brave and strong and saps the rest of us of any kind of bravery or strength. Wow. It's so fucking draining to love and accept someone who doesn't love and accept themselves. And that's the uh, only truth I know about Yeah, you. he doesn't love and accept himself. If you're not careful, you're going to die a lonely old queen. <laughs> what she call him a queen? Oh, dear. Oh, dear. All that in the middle of the th Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. <laughs> Going right past their apartment. Hello. Hello. It's a very jaunty little outfit. Must be resolute in creating whatever time he has left. In absolute freedom. Okay, good luck with that. Could be a little bit quiet. Abs still have a headache. That's fine. Cynthia. So they mentioned a headache. Does that <laughs> mean she has like a brain tumor? In a movie, when they mention a headache, it always means that she has a brain tumor. When they're singing and they start coughing, then it's tuberculosis. What is it talking about? I can't remember. I can't remember. You're talking about how handsome everybody looks tonight. With the beardy. Like, oh, now he's snorting cocaine. Fabulous. That's really going to be healthy, yeah. What with the beardy looks like the old man from the old man in the sea. I can see how cross you are, and I don't want you to go like that. I'm not. No, I don't believe you. <clears throat> Hold on. So it, she's from Chile, but she has kind. It's kind of a British accent. So maybe this, is that? I want to hear like video of her talking for real now, like to see where the accent came from and what the choice was there. And he asks if he can tell me a secret. He has a little crush. You see, indeed. But not on her, maybe. And he wants me to introduce them. Mendy Wager. Mendy. Oh, don't be so surprised. Oh. Mendy's a very handsome man. Oh, so what? <laughs> Oh, dear. Seems I'm attracted to a certain type. Yeah. It's my own arrogance to think I could survive on what he could give. Mm. It was sort of a banner I wore so proudly. I don't need. I don't need. Hmm. Yeah. I miss him. That child of mine. So she, she, she does kind of did kind of treat him like a child where, you know, he was allowed to go off and do his thing. And she took care of things, took care of him and took care of things. And okay. I don't know this piece. I've never heard this. Oh, 
I love that high note there. That's great. What's that guy standing over there? I wonder, is he going to like come up with like a high tenor or something? That... <laughs> I love that when the musicians are like really into what they're playing. It's like you can tell when they're bored and when they're like really into the music. Oh, he's the he's the chimes guy. Okay, he must need to be there for acoustics because that would look that would this would sound pretty awesome in this big cathedral like this. I don't know the history of this like performance, but I will say my headphones are doing pretty good because it sounds great. Doesn't look great again because Netflix is making me watch it in low res, it's driving me nuts. But it sounds gorgeous. It is interesting that they've got the percussion section like so spread out like that. That must have been for acoustics because the timpani is there, but the, the chimes guy is all the way over to the side. I wonder if they're like spread out distance wise around the end of the orchestra because usually they're together. <laughs> yeah, I think they liked it too. <laughs> they, liked, they liked playing that. This must be the 80s because she looks like Nancy Reagan. Oh, so an actual, so this is one of the very few actual shots from the audience that we get in this entire movie because he doesn't normally do that. I'm starting to see like his style of filmmaking, which is kind of fun, like to see this at the beginning of his, not his acting career, but the beginning of his kind of movie making career. You want to sit down? Yes. <laughs> Uh -oh. you like you. What's she got? She's got a brain tumor. Hello. Oh, here we go. Given the size of the tumor, I would recommend that we remove the breast, the underlying muscles, and the adjacent lymph nodes. Jesus. It's always bad when the co doctor comes in and, like, grabs your hand to hold it for you. Oh, is that lighter, darling? You mind your own business. <laughs> while he's got a cigarette in his hand himself. Is there anything you need? Anything I can do? Never get another perm. <laughs> Never get another perm? Ouch! <laughs> do, you, do you remember that, um, that bar mitzvah that you... Her perm looks good. I like it. <clears throat> yeah. <sighs> Oof. That's not good lung stuff. <laughs> oh, goodness. She can't just buy a box of Kleenex? They did to bed. Come on, I don't oh, need all this. Are the pillows all right? They're fine. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> There's a whole thing about, like, not having needs and not needing anything and not, yeah. <laughs> He's got a cigarette in his head. It's not even lit. <laughs> <laughs> the dog's like, nope. <laughs> Is she dying, like, right now? Oh, dear. <laughs> Why are all three of them squished in the back seat? Do they not have the heart to make put one of them in the front, <laughs> in her seat? That would be hard. Oh, we're in widescreen now. <laughs> oh, is he... Is this the conductor? The... With young conductors now? Yeah, I, I don't feel like they're following his tempo. Or maybe not. What do I know? What? Stop and then, yeah, like very it has to be very clear that the line between those two things. Be kind to him. <laughs> oh dear, it's like it's a really old guy. <laughs> this is bad. I don't know that about that. I feel about this. I was feeling really good about that scene before because I really liked how they were like interacting and now I'm uncomfortable with it. <laughs> it's like, it's not a good idea. The young guy like that. Any questions? Hmm. 
Yeah, lots of questions, I think, actually, is the thing. It's a very interesting film, though. I got to say, there's a lot of, like, there's a lot to think about, both by what was chosen to be included and what was chosen not to be included. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure what the movie is trying to say. I think I have it. But I also think that confusion and those questions are by design, which I'm kind of appreciating. There's a subtlety in it and an honesty, but also a forgiveness and an understanding that is kind of deep and gives me a lot to think about. Like the acknowledgement of these two warring sides in Lenny's personal and professional lives that he wasn't allowed to be who he wanted to be. He wasn't allowed to create what he wanted to create. He had to like function in this world that required that he be, that he make a choice. He has to be one or the other. He has to be in a particular box. You can't go from box to box and being in a particular box or at least pretending that he was, was the only option for success and how he had to navigate that. I found really interesting. I appreciate that this movie isn't so much about the writing or the creative process like so many other biopics are because like there's only so much of someone sitting at a desk with a pen and paper that's going to be interesting enough. So it's not like when we see, you know, Frida Kahlo putting paint to canvas or Elton John sitting down at the piano with a piece of paper that Bernie Taupin just handed him turning that into a beloved song like But we do get enough of that here to slate my desire for it. We just kind of get it in a different way. Like we see after the fact, the joy that he has in conducting, like even like that that rehearsal for the final number in Candide, which is such a gorgeous song. It's one of my favorites. He's so happy and clearly in love with the words and the notes that he's put together to make this beautiful music. He's so caught up in it that he has to express it like with his whole body. Like the shots of him conducting really show that beautifully. Like his captivation is just his love of music just in general. And what I think I really like about this movie is that how it so embraces like the inconvenient and the contradictory and the messy, the compromising, this rage inducing, this messiness of life and love. And that so much reminds me of like the lessons that are encapsulated in the plot of Candide. Like it starts like a fantasy in this young man's mind. He's going to go off on this great adventure and he's going to go be a hero and be in fall in love, fall in love. And it's all very kind of cliche. And then the reality of what he experiences leads to him kind of learning how messy and painful life is and to love the little things and embrace the difficulties of our choices and forgive ourselves for our mistakes And the more I think about this movie, the more I'm liking it and definitely like wanting to watch it again. Like it reminds me of everything everywhere all at once. Like Maestro is clearly not as out there as that movie, but it's just as I feel like emotionally raw and open hearted. It's kind of unflinching in its willingness to show like the good, the bad and the ugly. So because it's a lot. It's interesting, though. A lot of the reviews that I've read between, you know, watching just a minute ago and then filming this, they've said that it feels like surface or unemotional or that it has a facade but I also feel like that is a purposeful choice here too though I feel like those reviewers missed the point like when you're forced to live your life in a spotlight showing only half of yourself to the world and your livelihood and reputation depends on keeping massive secrets you build a very high and wide facade and it sometimes that becomes a facade to your own yourself too. Like Lenny was lying to himself just as much as he was lying to Felicia and his children and the public. And and I think that the whole point of the movie was that Felicia was the only one who saw through that facade. And we see how much that cost her. You know, she can only subjugate her own needs for so long, but that's their connection and their love story as kind of messy as it is. But in the end, you know, I think we are left with more questions than answers. And as the title card in the beginning kind of indicates, and I like that about this movie, like I think Bradley Cooper knew exactly what he was doing here. He wasn't trying to make an exhaustive encyclopedic, this is exactly how it happened documentary. And he could have made that because there's a lot there. There's a lot of really famous people that could have been included here. But he was telling a love story. And part of that is between Lenny and Felicia. And another big part of it is between Lenny and music. And I think it made for a pretty entertaining and visually and musically beautiful film. I really enjoyed watching it. So if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, do all the things. It really does help the channel. Check out my Patreon for exclusive content and click here to watch another of my reactions next. You guys are awesome and I love sharing movies with you. Thanks for watching with me.